Hello everyone, and welcome back. To go along with the rash of videos I've been making recently discussing speed play and how to play the macro game better, I thought what better way to show a good example of this than playing what most people consider to be the worst speed class, live, live commentary, and just sort of narrating through my thought process while playing some missions. I promise you that you'll come away from this video seeing Gunner for what he really is. An absolute titan of speed play, not the crippled little wandering goblin that everyone seems to think that he is. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So whenever we talk about Gunner, particularly when we want to think about playing fast, most people are going to have an inherent sort of bias against Gunner, just because, I mean, he is the least technically mobile of any class in the game. So that automatic assumption that a lot of people come to is that Gunner is going to be the slowest class at a lot of things. And while on a fundamental level that isn't entirely wrong, Gunner possesses a lot of things that allows him to go faster than the other classes in situations where it's not just about moving from point A to point B. So something I hope to demonstrate pretty well in this mission is my ability to largely ignore enemies or quickly deal with enemies and then get back to what I'm doing. This goes hand in hand with something else I want to talk about, which is how Neurotoxin Payload plays a role in the Gunner's gameplay when it comes to going a little bit faster and paying attention to less enemies. A lot of people advocate for Neurotoxin Payload being an incredibly good overclock because of the breakpoints it hits, how ammo efficient it is, and just basically how much you can kill with it before you need to hit that first resupply. Neurotoxin Payload is an incredibly good overclock, but not for the reasons most people profess it to be. Neurotoxin Payload is an incredibly good overclock for a reason that those people are not picking up on, which is it allows the gunner to largely ignore enemies and move on with what he was doing. That grunt guard is not going to die from that neurotoxin, but that's okay. Because either he's going to get run down by the minehead, I'm going to reapply it to him later on, or he's just not going to be able to keep up with me while I'm working on the objective. The main reason that myself and a lot of other people have so roundly denounced neurotoxin in the past is because just saying that it's an incredible S tier overclock is betraying the complexity of it. Whenever people say Neurotoxin is really good, it's my favorite gunner OC, it lets me win has fives or modded content, a lot of the time it's a very selfish way that it's fulfilling that goal for them. Because while what it's doing for me right here is very good and that it's allowing me to ignore the enemies and keep pressing the objective, if I had other teammates in the mission, it would be shifting a lot of burden onto them. Sure, it looks really good whenever I shoot a grunt and it slowly burns to death, but any enemy larger than that that's going to come running back at a random angle at a set period of time in the future and potentially come after one of my teammates who has his back turned and get a hit on them is very unfortunate and could be remedied just by me simply taking a different primary or actually deliberately killing that enemy. So a lot of the pull in the opposite direction that we get against Neurotoxin Payload is because of this, is because people play it in a very selfish way. And that's not to say that the Overclock can't play well in a team environment, or even in a slower play environment, because all of the points about it having incredibly good sustain and ammo economy are true. However, when it, you just simplify it to the point of saying, okay, I'm just going to take Neurotoxin and left click on bugs and everything's going to be okay, you're betraying some of the thought process that has to go into playing the overclock well. And I feel like a lot of players have been set up for failure in that way, because they've been told, oh, just take, uh, take Neurotoxin and left click on the bugs and everything's going to be fine. In reality, they're doing more harm than good by just fearing the enemies and making them run off in a random direction. So to wrap back around and say, where is Neurotoxin Payload really good on Gunner? Well, it's in solo, primarily, because not only do you not have to worry about deferring the aggro of those enemies onto your teammates, you also have the knowledge and control of when and where those bugs are going to come back to. Yeah, I know that some of the bugs I'm splashing with Neuro right now aren't going to die. However, whenever they do come back, I know that they're coming back for me, and I know vaguely what angle they're coming from, because I'm in control of the swarm. 
That and the inherent fear that's built into the auto cannon that we like to take with Neurotoxin Payload for that natural synergy allows us to ignore a lot of smaller enemies as they slowly die from the status effect. But aside from that even, the fear on the auto cannon, even without Neurotoxin Payload, is incredibly good for one reason. Whenever we're trying to go fast and do objectives, it allows us to splash enemies with that effect and get them off of us while we pre progress the objective. This is why you don't talk while you play, you get lost in simple caves. So as it turns out, the uh, cave I was looking for wasn't even connected to the cave system I was in, so I really don't feel too bad about missing that. Let's go ahead and uh, break through to that and uh, get back to it. So as I was saying, Neurotoxin allows you to pretty much ignore most enemies by just simply fearing them away and getting back to work. Some enemies, like oppressors, obviously you won't be able to ignore, but they, you can usually just run away from and get back to your objective, like I'm doing right now. Yeah, the suppressor's in my way, but I'm just gonna kinda pass by him. Doesn't really matter that much. Obviously, that's a much more valid complaint whenever we're looking at something like Salvage or Escort, where you kinda have to deal with bigger enemies. And in those situations, I really don't think Neurotoxin is that good because of that exact reason, is that it lacks that immediate coping power against larger enemies and leaves you relying entirely on your sidearm. But yeah, that about wraps this mission up. I'm going to drop this Dystrom in and find the rest while I'm waiting on the pod. Took a little longer than I wanted it to because of that side cave, so let me try to record another one. Alright, now we'll go ahead and tackle mining, which is something I feel like definitely stands out as Gunner not being very good at. This is largely abetted by playing in solo, as obviously I'll have Bosco here to help me mining anything that's out of my reach. But largely, Gunner's a lot more capable on mining than you might think he is. Just at, from the outset, like, oh, well, everything's up on the walls, so what can Gunner really do? Burning zip lines to get up to deposits isn't, like, a bad idea by any means. So I'll try to do that more than a little, instead of just letting Bosco do everything. First room of mining is usually pretty tame, just getting Bosco digging the dirt as soon as possible. And from there you're kind of free to do whatever you want while you wait. The major optimization for mining on non-scout classes is just making deposits in the caves and then not really like waiting to deposit in between them. So right there I kind of backtracked a little bit to actually get that nitra in so that when I find another vein of nitra like this, I'm able to actually fit it in my inventory without having to wait on Molly. That one probably would have fit alongside the other, but if it was larger, I think you take my point. So unlike Driller, you can't really do many shortcuts on mining, you kind of are just at the mercy of the tunnels. So you just run along until you find a way, find a natural cave system. If you are able to, like, skip the tunnel and go directly to the next actual, like, cave of volume in a mining mission, you should absolutely do that. There's rarely much of value in the tunnels, and if you're just trying to clear the mission, the fastest and easiest way to go about that will always be just getting to the next room, and whatever's in the tunnel, be damned. Just get there as fast as you can. So right now, we're kind of, we're getting into the part where you get stuck on mining, which is we are waiting for Molly. So while we're waiting, I'm going to get as much stuff mined as I can, thin out the enemies as much as I can, but largely, we're just waiting for her to catch up and get to a central point where we can deposit everything. This is why it's important to be thorough when you're first getting into a cave. Figure out where everything that you want is. That way, when Molly shows up, you've basically already got everything banked. This is a particularly large cave, so wasn't really able to get everything in time. But generally, I did a pretty decent job from what I can tell. I don't see anything else that I'm gonna wait for, so, so we just keep fearing these enemies. This is what I'm talking about with Neurotoxin Payload. It's not even really Neurotoxin that's doing what I want in that situation. Neurotoxin is the best choice, but it's basically just pushing enemies off of me with fear. That's the entire point, is hopefully I won't have to deal with those Praetorians at all in this mission. Hopefully I'll be through the remaining caves before they catch up with me. And you can also prevent Praetorians to get to you, or excuse me, from getting to you if you dig small enough tunnels through dirt. Which is what I was trying to do right there, going at that weird angle. So hopefully those Praetorians won't even be able to get down here. And I'll just, maybe I'll have to deal with them on the way back, but at that point, nothing really matters. 
I could have just keep kept running away from these enemies. I just wanted to stop and get this Nitra. I'm probably over mining Nitra already at this point, but the combination of that little wave and the Nitra, I just decided to stop. Probably the wrong decision in retrospect, but like I said, you're, you'll never be perfect. You just do the best that you can. So we do have a Tyrant Weed here. I'm gonna pull back a little bit, try to be careful not to start it before I'm ready. Okay. Figure out this gold chunk. And I'll probably crush the core lock with a resupply. I'm gonna try to get this Nexus. I can't tell where the heart is, which is a little concerning. But it should be fine. Maybe not. Okay. I'm inside the Nexus, can't hit it. Okay. Uh, wish I hadn't run out of zip lines already, that's unfortunate. I'll have to do a little uh, little rough dig right here. But I should be able to make a little dash jump to get up to where the heart is. There it is. Perfect. So, if you didn't know this, no matter how many players you're playing with, what difficulty you're playing on, the core lock will always open the first time after two sprouts are killed. So use that to time your opening appropriately with a resupply pod for free easy damage. It's much less worth doing with more players in the game, especially because more players will be uncomfortable getting this close to the weed in order to resupply. So you probably don't want to do that if you're playing with a team of inexperienced players. But especially in solo where you can just get right in there, there's no reason not to do something like that. I'm trying to... I'm gonna have to probably hang out over this pit a little bit. I am gonna kind of pump the brakes on the fight. Oh, oh there it goes. I'm gonna pump the brakes just a little bit because we have these Mactera to deal with now. As long as I kill this pod, we'll be fine. So this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Fearing enemies is really good. It distracts them, or excuse me, it, it disables them and makes them unable to hurt you. But whenever we're talking about things like Mactera, it can cause a lot of havoc in multiplayer. With, especially with other players not knowing which Mactera are live, active, aiming at them, aiming at someone else. And it can potentially turn their weak points away and make them take longer to kill. So it's not always a good idea to fear Mactera, but like we said before, in solo I know everything. Either a bug is feared or it's attacking me. Those are the only two states a bug can be in when we're thinking about Neurotoxin in solo. It's like right there, a scout with the uh, armor break weapon might be really annoyed that now he can't DPS down this Brundle that he was looking at. Uh, obviously, whenever I'm in control of the situation, I control when I want that to happen. Because even then, I still wasn't really able to kill it effectively, even when it was feared. But since I was a paying attention to it, I knew it was feared, I was able to take control of the situation, keep it feared, and keep it disabled like that. This is not an ideal location to fight a core lock by any means. We're getting through it, but the there is some pretty nasty potential for a healing pod to land down low here, so I'm pretty lucky that hasn't happened. Grab her, grab me through the core lock. You'd love to see it. I should have been shooting at the heart there. I should have seen that coming. Oh well. Heightened senses saves the day. Getting Getting mileage out of it. So I'm just gonna spam this down at this point. Pretty much in the bag. I'm gonna start paying attention to the actual mission again. That is a piece of Morkite, not a flea. And there we go. And all the shards stayed up here, beautiful. Hopefully Bosco can throw me this rock. Thank you. And we are I'm pretty certain there's enough more cut in here. Oh yeah, definitely. So about that's this mission about wrapped up. We have fleas left, but we will catch them on the way back to the drop pod. So here's here's what I was talking about. Even the sting tail couldn't actually make it through. That's kind of crazy. So yeah, coming back into this room, we can see there's the Praetorian that I left behind and the sting tail that I left behind. Like I said, they just didn't. They weren't involved. They didn't get back to fight me for the rest of the mission. 
Grab me. Oh, he made me drop the cup. You, Stingtail. I'll show you to show that I don't know how game mechanics work. So now that we've seen and talked about Neurotoxin Payload a little bit, I figured I'd move over to something else. I'm gonna do Plasma Burster Missiles as a pretty, like, strong departure from Neuro, so I actually have to focus on the enemies. This will probably do a little bit better of a job of showing how you focus on enemies when you're playing normal weapons. And also probably make me use shields a little bit and show how to employ those a little bit better. Alright, there's probably one over there. Also, I wanted it to be a little bit more, like, direct with what I'm doing in this one. Refinery is more or less just terrain dependent. If you have bad terrain, you're gonna have a bad time. If you have good terrain, it's just gonna be cake. Also, if you put pipes like that, you'll have a really bad time. Because, uh, as you can see, it made that very difficult for me. Number one thing, though, for solo refineries is always having Bosco building pipes. You can think of it basically as a reservoir of time, so that is going to buy me about a minute, I'd say, before Bosco has nothing to do and he isn't gainfully employed anymore. So I'm going to be watching that icon in the bottom left of my screen really closely to see whenever he becomes available again, and then I'll ping him onto something else. If I'm near a pipe, that should always be number one priority, but if nothing else, I want to have him mining something if I'm not near a point where I can ping a pipe to have him building it. So right now my main goal, I want to get back near the start of this pipe, not only to grab the other one, but also so I can ping Bosco onto it when he's done with that, which I believe he's about to be. So right now I'm just kind of stalling, mining Nitra, because the number one thing holding us back from finishing this mission is pipelines being built. At this moment in time, it's pipes being built. So, I can get Nitra later, I can string the other pipe later, I just want to get him started building that one. Because basically right now I'm still, I'm, you know, I can't be going much faster than I am because I'm going to have to build both of these pipelines. And sure, once I string it out I'll be able to help Bosco so that'll accelerate things. But at the same time, uh, I'm just going to stagger that over. It's usually better to do something like that, just take the loss and make two links instead of one. Instead of fiddling around with it like I was starting to there. I'm gonna let Bosco stay on that one, that way whenever he's done. I'm, instead of helping him with that, I'm gonna go back and start this other one by myself. Because that way when he's done, I can already be on this, ready to ping it and also building it. So this was a pretty good example, just because I, have su I had such good luck with where the pumps were, nothing that required crazy digging, nothing that took me a long time. So even as Gunner, I was able to stay productive the whole time, keep Bosco busy, and basically just keep the mission moving forward. So, like I kind of alluded to before, figuring out shield priorities and when to use them, to when to give up on trying to save them and just use them is a big thing for keeping missions going. Right there, I could have like fallen back and run away, not thrown that shield, and defended myself in a more conventional way, but just looking at that situation and how easy all of those enemies were gonna be to kill once I stood my ground, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna throw the shield, take the ammo economy hit. So I'm gonna leave Bosco to this because I wanna get enough nitro for a resupply on my way back, so I'm gonna have to get some of this. Oh no, there's more right here, okay. Okay, and there's our button. So this is exactly where you want to be with Refinery, especially in Solo. It's right around the first swarm. Maybe you don't get it off in time, but you ideally in a perfect world, you'll always be pumping before the first swarm starts. If I was Driller or NG, that, or maybe even Scout in a cave like this, I probably could have made that happen. Gunner, unfortunately, I just wasn't able to. So we're going to be fighting some pretty hectic fights here for the next like 30 seconds until the first pipes break. But that's okay, because we are a gunner, we can d deal with it, we can throw a shield if we have to. Right now, like, in a perfect world, I'd be getting all the crafting minerals and working on the secondary, but that's not really too feasible. I'm kind of just trying to survive right now. That's a lot of uh, ranged enemies. Oh, I only have one grenade, I'm smart.
Plasma Burster Missile is great dealing with Stingtails just because it stuns them to death. I know there's two Acid Spitters out there somewhere. I can hear one of them shooting at me. There he is. Probably just going to focus on this other one. Actera, we got our first break. I'm gonna go repair that now. So when it comes to missions, or let me be more specific, when it comes to refineries like this, where you actually are like pumping faster than you can do anything else, you have a lot of choice because if I wanna get these minerals, then I can just leave these pipes broken. The amount of bugs that spawn while pipes are broken is very, very greatly reduced. So I can basically just keep the game in limbo right here forever if I want to. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and repair it. So I am going to go ahead and repair this one, but I still do have a lot of stuff to do. So if it does, if push comes to shove and I do need more time, I'm just going to leave the next break done. I want to find this crate. I want to get that done. I want to get these jadas in. And right now I'm just moving at such a tempo that I can't really do that just because of the volume of bugs that are being spawned by the mission progression. That and the secondary objective as well, of course. Got three shields left, I can use this. Another thing that people don't think, tend to talk about too much with Gunner is how much of a damage bonus the shield is. Because all the dodging, all the kiting, all the considerations of what's going on around you goes away as soon as you throw a shield and allows you to completely focus on just killing enemies. So right there in that situation, I just had enemies all over me coming at me from different angles. So I was like, okay, I have a shield I can use because I don't need them for all defensive purposes. It was a really bad situation as well. So, I mean, I won't, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't it. In, that was entirely an offensive shield, but it's not always just, oh no, somebody's dead, or oh no, we're gonna get pushed off of the point defense zone. Sometimes it is, okay, there's a lot of stuff here I want to kill, and I don't want to, you know, make this a whole drawn-out process of trying to dodge them, so I'm just gonna throw a shield and kill everything. There is a short window of time after we press the button where we will be able to... Whenever we're, I'm just... Sorry, I'm thinking. This is why I shouldn't do these things live commentary. But after we press the button to send the thing back to orbit, we will have a short window of time to be able to work other stuff. So I'm considering right now what I want to do with that time. If that's going to be the time I get, like, Bismore or kill fleas. As you can see right now, I'm kind of starting to stall on the... Okay, there's the crate. Yeah, with a crate in a location like this, I kind of have to stall the mission a little. Just because it's so nasty to try to get batteries up here in the middle of a swarm. If it was down there on the ground, probably would have been way more comfortable with it. But, uh... Whenever Bosco does that, doesn't help either. Jesus. Okay. So now, I'll, uh... While I'm working on this, I'll put ba Bosco back on the objective. So I'm just watching his icon right now. As soon as I see it end, I probably should have started running a little sooner. Ping that pipe. And now we're back to work. Okay, get Bosco on that. We're starting to catch up with all the stuff in the cave. Obviously, when you have things like machine events, it starts to get even more extreme with how much time you have to stall yourself to get that stuff done. Let me grab this too. But overall, not too bad. I'm generally keeping up with what I want to do. Had to slow that repair down just a little bit because of the crate. That's gross. Get out here. Now we will work on fleas while we're waiting for the pod. Getting heavy carryable objects in, if you have more than one, trying to get them in the pod can be pretty gross. I know I have that one Jada's, so right now I'm pretty confident I'll just put that in the pod. If I find another one, then maybe I'll regret doing that, but right now I think we're doing perfectly fine. I also know relatively where the pod is going to land, just by experience, so I can pre-position the Jadas if I have the time. Which I might not, because these fleas are being surprisingly elusive. Going to some pretty tough spots. I shouldn't have shot from there, that was a mistake. 
Oh wow, it actually didn't spawn where I thought it would. Okay. Shows how much you know. Game knowledge, he says. Oh no, this is one of the spots. I've seen that spot before. Not where I thought it was going to be. Get Bosco to pick this back up. So while this might look like really uncomfortable for a lot of people, this really is kind of where you want to be. Like, you always, it, you can think of the game in the same way if you are actually like playing for speed, is that if you are not done and able to leave the cave, then you are bleeding time. So for some people that might look at my situation right now and be like, you're staying here longer than you would have, well, it's really the same as how other people would play, where they would wait to start pumping until uh, you had Fester Fleas, for example. So instead of doing that on the front end, I'm doing it on the back end. It also keeps the choices open to where if we were doing something like Gunk Seeds and I just played through the mission at normal speed, and I was like, okay, we could get the Gunk Seeds right now at our last chance right before we press button, or we could just leave. So, as opposed to doing gunk seeds before we even run the pipelines, which is putting much more time onus on the on us on the back end, that gives us more options doing it at the last possible moment. So, like, where you could wait to progress the mission until you have fleas, until you cracked that crate, until everything else was done, instead, continue to the progress the mission and sneak those little optimizations, sneak those little side, secondary, rare event stuffs in the, to the cracks while you're doing the main. With all that wrapped up, that's about all I have for you today. If there's any takeaway I can get you people to take from this video is that not everything about speed play is simply moving point A to point B. A lot of times it is, but sometimes you really need to be that brick wall, shutting down the bugs, and pressing the objectives under unbelievable pressure. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day.